Hi, welcome to Kabayala. This is Agosta. Today we're going to practice a sequence to stretch the entire body and relax and feel renovated and better. So we're going to use for this class uh, some props, access to a wall, a couple uh, blankets if you have, uh, also yoga blocks or books or even the blankets. You can just fold them and use them for support and a chair. So get those things and let's get started. We are going to start by placing the bolster and the blankets on top or all the blankets or the pillows and the blanket. So we can make some nice support for our torso. And then we're going to bring the knees wider apart. And we're going to bring them as wide as the edges of the mat. And then we're going to bring the toes together and slowly start laying on the blanket. But see that when you lay on your blanket, your tailbone lifts up a little bit. And then slowly we come down. We're going to stretch the arms forward. And first we're going to place the right ear on top of the bolster. And after a few breaths, when I tell you, we're going to turn the head to place the left ear on the bolster. But when we're here, we think about taking the back towards the heel. So we can stretch the lower back a little bit. So here we take the tailbone a little bit in. So when we were coming down, I said, take it out, lifting the tailbone. But once you are in the position, then to bring it a little bit in. So you look for that stretch in the lower back. Very, very soft. And see that the bolster is under your abdomen. You gotta feel the support under your abdomen. Just a couple more breaths. And I slowly turn the head to the other side. So now on top of our left ear. We try to keep the head parallel to the bolster. Shoulders move away from the ears. And use your arms to push your hips towards your heels a little bit. Especially if you notice that your buttocks is lifting a lot. Good, and now very slowly we're going to walk the hands towards your knees. And we're going to remove the support, the blankets, and then bring your knees together and we're going to sit. Now you're going to find that space by your wall and we're going to bring the legs up the wall. So I feel like it's important to think about when you are close to the wall, see if your buttocks are in the air or are on the ground. So when we sit next to the wall and then slowly I put something under my buttocks and then I can take it off if I don't need it. And then slowly using my arms, I start rotating and lifting the legs up. Stretching the legs, scooch your buttocks towards the wall. And the support under the hips feels good. Even if we don't need it, still it's a nice stretch for the lower back. Then we take the palms up, rolling the shoulders under and engaging the quadriceps. Bring the knees towards you. And then slowly we're going to stretch the top of the feet. So we're reaching into the wall with the big toes. 
but see that your feet are parallel to each other and see that your inner side of the feet and the outer side of the feet are in the same level, they are even. Sometimes when we do this, the outside of the feet are going towards the wall more and the inner side are starting to open and move out and that it's a sign of our inner legs being too short compared with the our outer side of the legs and then release and bring the toes towards you now stretching the legs again lift through the heels and bring the toes towards you relax the abdomen engage the quadriceps and release Take a moment, inhale and exhale. And once again, reach towards the wall with the big toe. Stretch the legs. Open the dorsal part of your feet. The top part of your feet. Open. And stretch. Don't forget your legs need to be stretched. One more breath. Reach with the toes and release and slowly bring the toes towards you. Maintain the feet parallel to each other with the inner and outer edges of the feet parallel and the same level. Lift the kneecaps, last breath, lift through the heels towards the ceiling and release. Then take the legs wide apart and go as wide as you can with the feet flexed. If this hurts your hips, place a block or a blanket. And I'll show with one ray under the leg that is hurting you so there is a support and don't go so wide just stay less not so wide flex the feet take the back of the legs towards the wall open the back of the legs keep the buttocks touching the ground we gotta keep the wall so we try to keep the contact with the buttocks and the wall. Last breath. And then slowly, you can use your hands if you need, bring the legs towards each other and then cross your legs against the wall. And then we can use the hands and push the thighs towards the wall. This feels nice also on the neck and the back. Relax the abdomen. And slowly release, stretch the legs and change the crossing. And push the thighs against the wall. Shoulders descend. Moving towards the ground, relax the neck. You should have a gaze towards the ceiling. Last spread. And then place the feet on the wall. So we are bending the legs, feet on the wall. And then we are extending the left arm back and then we roll towards the left. You can do the right too if that feels better. And pause for a moment. And then push with your hand to sit up. Good. We're going to come into all fours. Wrists under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Cat cow. Inhale, push the crown, bring the crown of the head and the tailbone in. 
abdomen in, stretch the back of the torso, and exhale, cow, lifting the head, lift the tailbone. Keep your arms stretched, keep the arm into the arm socket, cut. Push a lot the crown away. Cow. And do two more with your own breathing. Inhale, moving. Exhale, moving. You can choose inhale or exhale in different, in each of these movements. I like inhaling in the cat, exhaling in the cow. But not everybody is the same way. Good. And then we come back, we come into all fours. And we're going to go towards the wall. So if you are not by the wall, go towards the wall with your mat. And we're going to come into the down dog at the wall. With the fingers. So we spread the fingers wide apart. And then we take the index and the thumb and place those against the wall. Hands are mat distance apart. The elbows are turning and the pit of the elbows are pointing towards the front, towards the wall. And then crawl your toes under, inhale, and come up, downward facing dog. Now let's just take a moment here, stretching the back of the legs, stretching the torso, pushing the wall away. Move the shoulders away from the ears, shoulder blades together. Abdomen is coming in. Lifting the kneecaps and taking the heels back and down. Relax the head. Last breath. Open the back of the legs more. Stretch the arms and the torso. And then bend the legs. And slowly walk your feet towards your hands. Forward fold. Feet hip distance apart. Grab opposite elbow. Move the shoulders away from the ears. Be mindful of your shoulder blades. So they are trying to come towards each other. Bring the weight towards the toes. Keep pressing down into the inner side of the feet. Lift the kneecaps, open your hamstrings. And switch the grabbing of the elbows. Top arm now switches. Keep reaching down with the crown of your head. Abdomen is coming in. Don't forget your shoulders. Lift the kneecaps, press with the inner side of the feet. Now release the arms. Grab your left ankle with your right hand ankle or can be the calf muscle and open the chest lifting the left arm towards the ceiling keep your legs engaged the right shoulder it's trying to crawl towards your ear don't let it don't let your right shoulder or your left shoulder the bows need to move away come back to center forward fall switch left Hand grabbing the right leg and lifting the right arm. Little gentle twist. Stretch your hamstrings. Abdomen in. And release. Then we're going to bring the hands into our hips. And stretch forward and up. Keep the legs tight there. Tadasana. Inhale and exhale, let's take the arms up, inhale. 
Ah. Inhale again. And in the exhalation, lower your arms. Good. Going to start with our standing poses. Going to move this way. Have a block or blanket block. Always better for the support. Just have it handy. I'm going to start with the warrior two by the wall. So left heel comes against the wall. Left palm on the wall. Keep the contact of the left palm. Don't let it go. Take, take the right leg away. Away from the other leg. So they come away from each other. See that the heels are aligned. Heel with heel or heel with arc. We always check that. And then press down with the left heel. So the left thigh muscle is moving back. Then extend the right arm. Inhale. Look up. Exhale. Very slowly bend your right leg. Keep the left palm. As you bend the right leg, you got to keep the left palm on the uh, wall. Good. So we keep pressing into the wall with the left heel and you may feel doing that how the left thigh muscle is engaged because it's pressing into the wall and the right knee needs to bend and then we look that the right knee is going towards the right pinky toe. Good. And extend the right leg. And then we're going to bring the feet parallel and walk feet together. Tadasana. And then we turn to the other side. Right leg by the wall. Right hand stays in the wall. We don't move it. Walk the left foot towards the left and turn the left leg out. Check the alignment of your heels. The right hand, it's aligned with the right shoulder, same level. Take the left arm away from the body. Press a lot with the right heel into the wall. Feel the right thigh muscle tighten. It's strong and it's engaged. And then keeping that, slowly bend the left leg. Right hand touching the wall. Right heel touching the wall. Check your left knee and see if it's going towards the left pinky. Bend the leg. Press with the right heel into the wall. Take the left knee towards the left. Relax the neck. We are not going to turn the head in this pose today. We want to worry more about our hips. And slowly extend the left leg. Feet parallel and step feet together. Now we're going to grab the block and walk towards the wall again. Warrior one with the block. So we are placing the block under the knee. Take a moment to observe that your knee is directly above your right ankle. Sometimes it's easy to bring the, the foot under the block too much and then we don't have an alignment there. Then we can place the, the hands on the wall and they got to be aligned with our shoulders and then we take the left leg back. But you got to check your heel aligned with the other heel. In these poses where we are revolving the torso, it's really important that we see the alignment of our heels. So we keep our hip in a good alignment. And then press down with the left heel a lot. Feel your left thigh very engaged. Feel it. Focus in that leg, in the back leg. And then the top of the buttocks goes down. Almost like tailbone in. It's a little tucking in right there. But that opens the lower back. And then use the arms to help you rotate. There's a lot going on in what we're doing. And we're pressing with the right knee into the wall so the knee is not moving. 
we can work in our back leg. You should feel your turn in the waist and you should feel the glutes, the left glutes. One more breath, stretch the leg a lot, the back leg a lot. Nice. And grab the block, come out. That's how it's supposed to feel when you are doing the warrior one in the middle of a room. Switching. Now it's the left leg by the wall, placing the block under the knee, right under the knee, on the shin bone. Hands on the wall, align with the shoulders, and then walk your right leg back. Watch your alignment with your heels. Heel to heel or heel to arc. Good. Then the arms come into the arm socket, so we're spreading through the collarbones. The chest is lifting, and then press down with the right heel. So much that you feel your right quads engaged and strong. And after a few breaths, burns. And then because you are rotating your torso to be in front of the wall, you should feel also the stretch in the right waist. You guys feel all that? Yes. Good. Because that's how you're supposed to feel when you are in the middle of a room. But we cheat because we are in the middle of the room and <laughs> this is helping us to go deeper in that moment. And then our muscles learn and remember. Last breath. Stretch the right leg a lot. And slowly grab the block and release. Tadasana. Going for the triangle pose, we can use the block of a chair if you need. So back into the wall with the left heel now. So place the block by the front of the mat and then take the left heel. The left heel is on the wall and we take the toes in a little bit. So the left toes are coming inward and you can place your hand again, the left hand by the wall and move the right leg forward. Aligning again those heels. And place the block by your right ankle. Take the right arm away from the body. Press again a lot with the left heel into the wall. Keep the top of the left thigh moving back. It's moving back because it's pressing, the heel is pressing into the corner between the wall and the floor. Then we keep that going, press with the right big toe so we don't bend the right leg with a straight stretch. And then we start reaching towards the right leg. Keep the fingers on the wall, still left fingers still on the wall. They're still on the wall. They're still on the wall. Stretch and come down. Hand on the ankle. More, or the block, or your shin bone, or a chair, whatever we're using today. Lifting the left arm, reaching up through the left arm, press the heel into the wall a lot, and lift through the left arm. That's the two actions that we're focusing more today. The head is aligned with the spine, which is keep it there for today. And lift through the left arm, press into the wall, lift the kneecaps. Both quadriceps are talking. Nice. Last breath, lift more the left arm and pulling up with the left arm. Come up, nice and slowly. And feet parallel, and then we switch. Now is the right heel by the wall. Move the block. So left leg moves away. Hand, the right hand is on the wall for now. We make sure that our 
heels are aligned. We see that our right toes are coming towards diagonal inward. And then extend the left arm away from the body. And now we are pressing. We start the pressing with the right heel into the corner. The, it's there between the wall and the floor. And then lifting the kneecaps. Both legs are really strong and working. Take the top of the right thigh back. And slowly start reaching. Keep the fingers on the wall still. Engage those squats and then come down with the left hand. The movements are slow so we can adjust our muscles and our hips and do it properly. And then we repeat the actions. Press into the wall with the heel. Move the top of the right leg back. Lift through the right fingertips. Press with the left big toe mount. You should feel this in your legs, well, everywhere, but in your, in your legs a lot and your waist. Shoulders move away from the ears, lift through the right fingertips and repeat the action. Press into the wall with the right heel. Good. Just one more breath. Do the best you can. Press into the wall and push. Pull up with your right arm, come up. Feet parallel and bring feet together. Tadasana. Inhale, lift your arms up. And in the next exhalation, lower your arms. One more time. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, and then inhale again. And in the exhalation, lower your arms. Good. Side angle pose. Left heel by the wall. The block comes. You can use a chair or you can bring your arm on your thigh. I'll show you. But left hand on the wall. Walk the right leg towards the front of the mat. Heels align. Extend the right arm and then inhale, look up, exhale, you're going to bend the right leg, keep the fingers on the left, almost like a warrior two first, and then bring your right hand on top of your thigh, you can place the elbow on top of your thigh, or on the block, the hand on the block, or the hand on the floor, that's the options, and then we're turning the left arm through the shoulder palms up and then bring the left arm overhead. Side angle. So we press with the left heel into the wall and the right knee is pressing into the right arm. If you have the arm next to the leg. Depending your modification and then reach with the left fingertips towards the left to the right, reaching towards the right and slowly pull out with the left arm, stretch the right leg and come up, feet parallel and we go the other side, right heel against the wall, blocked by the left Side of the left leg, left leg moves towards the front of the mat, right hand on the wall. All our little steps so we can do this pose right. Extend the left arm towards the left, press into the, block, the wall with the right heel and slowly bend the left leg. Keep the fingertips, right fingertips on the wall still. And inhale, in the exhalation, bend more the leg and bring the left hand down in whatever modification you chose. Then turn your right arm at the shoulder and bring the right arm overhead. And the actions here, pressing into the wall with the right heel, reaching 
with the right fingertips to stretch the entire right of your right side of the torso and then pressing with the left knee into the left arm. The arm is bracing the leg. If you have a block, you can see I'm showing right there. The hand, my hand is by the left ankle and the block is right next to the left ankle. Okay, reach up and pulling up with the right hand, stretch the left leg, feet parallel and walk feet together. Tadasana. Chair pose by the wall, so stand with the wall behind you. Walk your feet about one foot away from the wall. Feet together, knees together. Then bring your arms in front of you with the palms facing each other. And then inhale, arms up. Reach up through the fingertips. And inhale again. In the exhalation, bend the legs and bring the buttocks towards the wall and lower. Go as low as you can, keeping the heels on the ground. And then lift the arms up. You should feel the uh, stretch in your calf muscles. Inhale and exhale. Couple more breaths, go lower. We have the wall, so we should be able to do this easier. Nice, go lower and slowly come up, lower your hands, inhale, arms up, exhale, down. Now we're going to do the same, but instead of do the chair pose, we're going to twist. So bring your arms, hand center, hands in prayer. And we're going to inhale. In the exhalation, bend the legs, buttocks on the ground, on the wall. And you can walk your feet a little bit forward if that works better. And then we're going to take the left elbow towards the right knee. Maybe hug the elbow, if possible, in the right side of the right leg and then push with the left elbow to turn. See that your knees are even. Don't allow your left knee starting to move forward. And back to center, we stay with the legs bent and we switch sides. Now it's the right elbow, hooking in the outside of the left leg, turn left. Press the leg, with the elbow. Abdomen comes in and stretch. And release. Center first and come up. Good. We're going to use the um, wall or the block. So it depends on you what you want to do. I'm going to bring both and then we can show. Let me see. So we're going to use two blocks if you have, or the chair. And I'm going to do it in the wall. I think it's better to see. Coming in Ardha Uttanasana or half forward fold. But we're going to do it by the wall. So that's where it gets a little trickier. So we have, we have the chair here. I'll show you the chair if it's needed. Or the blocks. The thing is that we got to bring the body against the wall and that's the, the hard part because it's very easy to lose the balance if our legs are touching the wall. So we have our chair or the blocks in front of us, hip, the feet are hip distance apart and then slowly we stretch, you can bring the hands by your hips and stretch forward and it may be hard. So you got to step forward, step forward, and then you just step back after you're ready. I mean, your hands are in the chair or on the block. But then step those feet and maintain the contact between the entire back of the legs and the buttocks on the wall. 
Leave the kneecaps. That is already a job, keeping those legs there. And then when we're here, we're going to try to bring the shoulder blades together. That's why maybe the chair could be better for some people because it gives you more leeway to move because it's not so low. It helps you to lift a little bit better. And then just stay there, repeating the actions, lifting the kneecaps, keeping the legs in contact with the wall, shoulder blades together, flat your back. Bring the head in the same line with the spine and the abdomen is coming in. You bring the abdomen in, you'll see it's easier to place the buttocks against the wall. Just a couple more breaths. Remember the feeling because you should feel more weight on your uh, toes more than in your heels. And then walk your feet one step forward. Bring your hands into your hips and stretch forward and up. Legs engage. We're going to come now in the half moon. So also chair or using the block, bring, we stand in front of the chair. That's how we come in the chair. So the feet are pointing the chair. And then we just bend and place our left, I'll do my right side first. So my left hand is going to be on the chair. My left foot stays where it is, just pointing the toes towards the chair. I can use my right hand if, if I need. And then I lift my right leg first and then I gather my balance and then I lift my right arm. So that is the half moon with the chair. It's awesome because doing it with the chair help us to ensure that our left hip the left side of the hip is appropriate, appropriately placed because the left toes are pointing towards the chair and they cannot go anywhere. And slowly lower your right leg and come up. Now you can use the block and do it traditionally with the block if you want to. I like it like this because it really makes me go deeper I feel like I'm more straight, more aligned when I do it with a chair like this. Because I feel it a lot. <laughs> the other way I feel it's super easy, this way I don't think it's super easy, so it's interesting. So again, we stand in front of the chair. The right foot now is going to be totally immobilized. Right toes pointing towards the chair, right hand, the palm is on the chair. And then first thing is lifting the left leg. And then I turn my torso. You can also place your hand on the back of the chair if you need to stay there or come up more. And then lift. A lot of balance here. And then we open the chest. Keep the head aligned with the spine. Lift the right kneecaps. Good. Nice. You can place the hand on the back of the chair if that helps you to keep the left leg up. And slowly lower the left leg and come up. Tadasana. That was fun. I like doing it that way. Do the modified camel. So you can use a blanket if you need more support for your knees. It's only one pose on our knees that we're doing today, but we, we got to make ourselves happy so we can stretch better. So if our knees need support, we use support. And then we bring the feet under. And when our feet are under the chair, let's crawl the toes under. Because this chair, my chair doesn't let me too much room, but because this pose usually has the toes under, so let's just pretend. 
they were almost in the right 100% camel. And then we grab this back of the chair. Good. Now roll the shoulders back. Feel the squeeze of your spine with your shoulder blades. Lift the chest. And then slowly bring the hips forward. And you will realize it's all connected. The hips go forward and the chest lifts more. And then I squeeze my shoulder blades more. It's like it's all connected because it is all connected. Good. Squeeze your glutes. Feel the glutes saying hello. Just five more seconds. Roll the shoulders back. Hips forward. And slowly release. Good. We're going to stand up. Keep the chair the way it is. Just stand with the chair behind you. Hands on the top of the chair or the size of the chair if your chair is too tall. And bring the feet together, big toes touching. And then again, rolling the shoulders back, hips forward. Bring the weight of your body towards the toes. And once again, we're stretching, lifting the chest, squeezing the glutes, hip forward, rolling the shoulders behind you, keeping the gaze forward. Feel the stretch from the pubic, pubic bone all the way towards your neck. Last breath, lift the kneecaps. And come back, towards the chair. And then, grabbing the back of the chair again. Keep the hips above the knee, so we are not walking forward, not, move, not moving forward here. We're just going to lift one leg at a time. So right leg up first. Go the highest you can go. Can point with the toes. Good, lift the left. Kneecaps. Stretch the right leg. Make sure you're not leaning on the chair. And lower. Reset. Weight of the body on the right leg. Lift the left leg. Pointing with the toes. Lift the right kneecap. Stretch the right leg. It's easy to bend one leg and then the other one will go higher, but that's not what we want. Feel your glutes and lower. We're going to do it one more time. Inhale and exhale. And weight of the body on the left leg. See the left toes are pointing towards the front. And lift the right leg, pointing with the right toes. Roll the shoulders back. Stay perpendicular to the ground. Stretch the legs. And lower. Switch. And left leg up. Stay aligned. See that your hips are above your right heel. They are even and you're lifting the left leg. And lower. And release. Whew. Let's move this chair now. We're not going to use it. Come on your mat, just sitting on it. And take your legs wide apart. Flex the toes, the feet. Sit on your seat bone. So maybe bringing the hands by the hips, lift a little bit the torso and then move the buttocks back. Trying to sit more on your sit bones. You can use a support if you want, sitting on a blanket or a block or two blankets. Lift the chest, lengthening through the sides of the waist. And we're going to make it a little harder now. First thing, we have to engage the quads. So the legs need to be engaged and strong because they are our foundation. 
Then we're going to inhale, lift the arms up, palms facing each other, reach up through the fingertips, descending the shoulders, Squeeze the thighs, you want to stretch the legs, and then turn towards the right, turn, keep the legs engaged, come back to center, lift up through the arms, stretch those arms more, and let's go to the left, toes pointing towards the ceiling, lift through the fingertips, and back to center. And lower your arms. Inhale. And exhale. And grab from under your legs. And bring the feet together. And let's grab our blocks. Or blanket or something that we're going to use. Because we're going to place it in between our feet. And we're lifting the chest, abdomen is coming in, descend the knees, and then we go to number two, we're opening the hips a little bit. And the last one, number three. We can take the legs forward a little if we have to. Just a couple breaths. And we we'll go back to number two. Lifting the chest. If this Getting these blocks so wide apart, the feet so wide apart hurts or it's not the day to do this, just stay in number one or even remove the block entirely. Number one, lift the chest, abdomen in. Bring the abdomen in so the tailbone goes down and we don't hurt our lower back. And remove, source of the feet together, butterfly. Move the shoulders away from the ears. And slowly bring the knees together. Hug your knees towards your chest. And we're going to grab our blankets. So one, we're going to use one. And we're going to roll it. Egg roll. Get it tight. Doesn't need to be so thick. It's for our back. We want to do a little stretch for our back, like a shoulder stand modification. So if you need something for our, your head because your neck is tight, you can place a block or another blanket by your head. And then we're going to bend the legs. You see hands and slowly bringing the shoulder blades, the bottom tip of the shoulder blades on top of the blanket. Really nice and slowly, arms in cactus. And then you can scooch a little bit towards the front of the mat if you have to. But the idea is to keep, and then stretch the legs. The idea is to keep the support under the tip of the shoulder blades. So then the shoulders can descend towards the crown. Then the tailbone is coming in, so we're stretching the lower back and the feet are engaged. So the toes are pointing towards the ceiling and we're lifting the kneecaps. Pressing down with the entire back of your leg, we are stretching the legs. That helps also to support better our back. And then feel the stretch between your pubic bone all the way towards your throat. Stretching the entire front of the torso. Relax the shoulders, relax the neck. Palms up. And then repeat the actions. Stretching the legs, pressing down with the back of the legs. 
stretching the front of the torso, shoulders descending towards the ground. And then bring your arms behind you and stretch your arms. Maybe palms facing each other, if that feels better. And then relax the arms, bend one leg at a time. And come out, you can roll to a side or just remove the support from under your back in the best way that works for you. And slowly we're just removing this blanket, so move it out. And lay it back on the mat. Bring the knees towards your chest. Little rocking side to side. And place the feet on the ground, cross the right leg on top of the left. And bring the knee towards your chest, modify pigeon right hand between the legs. Just relaxing the back and the neck. Just softly bringing the left knee towards your chest. And then switch legs, both feet on the ground, left leg on top of the right. And bring the right knee in squeezing the knee into your chest. Keeping the shoulders down, the neck is relaxed. And release. Then bring the knees again into your chest. And then grab from under your thighs and make circles, big circles with your knees, like you're painting something in the ceiling, a big circle. So we go one way, just relaxing the entire back, and the other way. Good. Then place the feet on the ground. Take your arms by the sides of the body, Align with the shoulders and then cross the right leg on top of the left and drop the knees towards the left. Keep the shoulders down, head towards the right. Inhale and exhale, nice and deep. You can make this twist a little deeper if you want to grab your right knee with your left hand. All depends how we feel today. Sometimes we feel very flexible, sometimes we don't. Come back to center, we are switching legs. Left leg on top of the right. And the knees towards the right. Gaze towards the left. And come back to center. Prepare for Shavasana, roll the shoulders under, palms up, close your eyes and then extend one leg at a time forward. Keep the feet together first and inhale, deeper, the deepest you can and in the exhalation release and let go. Soften your brows, your eyebrows, soften your cheeks, soften your tongue, let it rest on the roof of your mouth, soften your shoulders, your arms. Relax the abdominal wall, relax the hips. And 
and then scan your body from the crown of the head slowly start going down and see that all your muscles are relaxing connected tissue is relaxing and as you go through your body let go of everything and then go inward observing your breathing Shavasana Then slowly wiggle the fingers on the toes, open the hands and close the fist. Make circles with your ankles and your wrists. It's very relaxing movements, softly and nice and easy. And then bring your arms overhead interlace the fingers and take the palms out reach with the palms reach behind you and then reach with the toes stretch the entire body and then release the hands relax the arms and then bend the legs one at a time and roll to a side Inhale and exhale again, nice and deeply. And come up, crossing the legs. Bring in the hands, heart center. Inhale and exhale one more time. Nice and loud, yeah. Bow the head. Namaste. Thank you for practicing with me today. I hope that you liked the class. If you did, give me the thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time. Thank you.